Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Carbonite Bounty BS with me and the nerds here. I'm glad you guys are with us here, and we're starting out towards the back end of this, so season six, and the first part one of this, episodes one to seven. Uh, before we get going here, we'll do a quick introduction. Obviously, as we know, we have our new, newly crowned Star Wars fan, DP Brown, no longer a neutral. We have our guys in production here, not on the button, so we'll give them some credit, our man Hitch. And then... Last but not least, our legendary Legends fan, we'll call him Admiral Tarkin. Yeah. And then there's obviously me here, the guy who's at the bottom. The last guy, bottom of the barrel, the youngest one. So it's the guy who gets picked <laughs> on the most. Least seniority. Yeah, least seniority will say that. But uh, yeah, guys, um, I'll say, you know, just leading off on this, um, decent batch of episodes, a little anticlimactic for me. There's a lot of good content in there, but... Uh, just not what, what I was used to as far as how we kind of jumped out of the gates a lot of the things. I mean, you can kind of see, uh, you know, where, the, I mean, this order's coming. You know, you, you kind of see where people are stressed and, you know, just where we are as far as, you know, the Jedi Order and, and where, you know, Palpatine and the Rise of the Empire is coming. So what were you guys' initial thoughts so far? So <clears throat> this is the first, this is the first piece. What do you need to run a galaxy? What do you need control of? First, you need money. You need money. Yeah. You need the money. You need money to fund your whatever you're doing. Fund your your military. Fund your uh, political drive. Whatever you're doing, you got to have the money. So this is the first chunk that Palpatine has succeeded in in taking control of. Marvelous, marvelously done. Clovis, what a patsy. Poor guy fell in love with Padme. You can't blame the guy. Pissed off a Jedi Knight. <laughs> too bad, too sad, right? What are you going to do? I mean, I, I felt bad for the guy, uh, but you know what? It, it seems like it's uh, it's it's very... Uh, pro, uh, Apropos? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it all made sense. I knew where it was going. You know, uh, boy meets... Or girl meets Jedi, falls in love. Uh, boy meets girl with Jedi and wants her. I mean, it's, and you've got this whole political mess going on and he was the perfect patsy for the whole thing. Dooku saw it. Palpatine was pulling the strings. The whole thing went down like clockwork. Oh, speaking of clockwork, really enjoyed the banking clan, banking clan uh, steampunk uh, artwork. Very cool. Uh, with all the gears and everything and the, the old, the sort of the old technology meets new. Um, great set of episodes because it was that first key, the first key that Palpatine needed to, to turn in the lock to become complete and, and total power control, just power hungry monster that he will become. So I thought it was a great set of episodes. I, I did actually watch the whole thing several times just to make sure I understood what, where it was going. But very important set to set us up for Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, this was a great set of setup. Um, like um, you know, like Kim was saying, it was it was a bunch of of different you know politics you know going on, especially with the money aspect and all these balls being thrown up in the air. Chaos sown here, chaos sown there. You know, you got the the um stuff with pal, you know, with um um Anakin and you know Padme, you know, going on. You know, that's a element of chaos. You know, Clovis, you know, betrayal of chaos and stuff, and it just fell back into Palpatine's lap. You know, he's the one in control of the money now. <laughs> Wow, that is just like that's just classic, you know. It's classic trope, good movie stuff. When when you see a when when you see a trope out there, you hope it's done good. And this this you know it, the way it was done, it was just it was just masterful. And like and like Ken said, it just sets us up for what we're about the about when when the order showdown goes you know goes down. But um, no Ahsoka. <laughs> so it's like seven opus, you know, a seven opus episodes in. We got the tragedy, of what happened with Ahsoka, but none of that. I, I love it when stories do this. It, it it takes one of the 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 main characters out of the equation because none of this matters with her. You know, at some point we're going to get her story again. But I, I love it when they take a major player out of the game and then lay you down with 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 all this. So yes, really good set of episodes um, so far. 
You know, speaking of taking a major player out of the game, RIP in peace to fives. One of the original, you know, the real OG clone troopers going out uh, on his feet, fighting back against uh, Order 66. And and what a great set of episodes this is to, to lay that to rest. The clones are not going to figure it out. And, and I'm glad that they sort of get ahead of this, right? You would think these clones are smart, they're creative, they're going to figure out if there's something embedded deep inside them, uh, you know, that's against their, their moral programming or whatever. And here they're like, nope. They'll never get there because the Palpatine will never let them. One wonders what Palpatine said to Fives uh, that caused him to flip out. Maybe just the truth. I'm a Sith Lord. You're going to murder all the Jedi whether you like it or not. And now they're going to kill you. I mean, I, that's pretty much all. It seems like he just said that. And that means that Palpatine is, is just hard and cold like ice. And that is awesome. To just see him pull the strings like this in this... Uh, in this set of episodes. And it's, it's interesting that we get so little of, of uh, Emperor Palpatine. We'll just call him Emperor Palpatine. Up right yeah. up until he shows up to Lightning Bolt, his old apprentice uh, on Mandalore. And now he's an active participant. You know, these are his plans. He's, he's, you know, he's got everything running the way he wants. And at the end of this, who, who is incorruptible, right? The Jedi. So mm -hmm. now we have, the the means to eliminate the Jedi in place and everybody else is corruptible. And what does that mean? It means you can buy him. And who has all the money now? Palpatine. It's a pretty good plan. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, like, it, like you guys said, it's a, it's a good setup episode. I mean, it kind of goes hand in hand. I mean, once he said he had plans for Maul after the lightning. I mean, you figure if Maul was the ruler of Mandalore, he has a, a, essentially an army there, and he's basically the ruler of the outskirts because the Huts at this point agreed to, you know, basically join whatever his faction was. I forget what it was in Solo, so forgive me for that. But uh, he Black basically Sun. is the Black Sun. Yeah, he's basically the, you know, the overall leader to that, even though the face of it's really Maul. So, yeah, he basically is the crime lord. I mean, you know, as we said, you know, Palpatine is pulling the strings on all ends. He literally is the the be all and end all of all ends at this point. And the Jedi still don't see it coming, which is still shocking to me. They're yeah, that cloudy. Crazy. Yeah. They're that yeah. clouded, yeah. Especially Yoda. You would think that he would yeah. sense he's always sensing something, but can't sense this. Yeah, that, I that's mean... my only gripe <laughs> about the whole about all this Star Wars stuff is how like kinda in blind he was. I mean, if he was sensed it like you're saying, and maybe was the one that it, it maybe he felt remorse because he couldn't stop it is one thing. But for him to be like, everybody to be so blind, that to me is the only like, eh, I don't get it. As far as, you know, especially as powerful he is, knowing his race. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. I'm just a little head scratcher for me. But here's well, the thing about Palpatine that's different is that we knew before any of this, any of, we got to end this part of the story, we know he wins because he's the emperor. And that's what's so crazy about, like, you don't, you don't have to sell me on the fact that he's going to win because he's the emperor in the shows I already watched, right? So it's yeah. just about how he assumes the power. It's interesting to see him taking on sort of the... This is like the way Augustus took power in ancient Rome. Um, he did it through prestige. And then he started assuming the um, the offices of the state until he held all the offices. And then he was the state. So this is... It's, it's interesting to see Palpatine start really pulling together, you know, the levers of power. I, I think it's a double... Uh... It's a double whammy because not only is Yoda missing it, but Mace is missing it. And think about this. What I, I was thinking the same thing, uh, T. Mitch. Um, Yoda and Mace seem to be focused solely on Anakin and making sure Anakin is still a player in their side of this whole mess. So Yoda's like, you are the perfect one to go after this. You should. So they are so focused on him that they're missing everything else. So I think that's what it is. This is clever misdirection. We could call it Jedi Houdini because Palpatine yeah. is able to take a very simple action, which is just doing his thing. He's doing his job. He's 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 Supreme Chancellor. He's in charge of the Republic right now. And pretty much that gives him carte blanche. He can do whatever he wants. So now the Jedi are like, OK, well, this guy's doing his thing. We're going to focus on what we've been doing, which is military protection, detective work, investigation. 
Yoda and Mace are pretty much the players, right? Yoda is confiding in Mace. They're the two that are always making the decisions. So maybe there's the problem because they're both hoodwinked. They have no idea what's going on because they're so focused on Anakin yeah. and belief yeah. that he's the yeah. he's the balance to the force. And he, we would have to keep make sure he's a player, make sure he's in the game, make sure he's a headline, you know, and that's their downfall is they put all their chips in one corner and they're not looking at any other bets. They're not looking at black or white. They're just looking at 13. They're looking at 66 red. That's it. And they're not focused on anything else. So, but you can't blame them because what would you do? Right? Like, what would you do? You want, in, when you're in battle, you want to find the simplest things to focus on first, win that battle, move on to the next. So this is their, this is just their thing. It's their focus. That's all I could come up with. Uh, you know, I, like I said, I watched this whole thing maybe eight times and, and I thought the same thing. Why is Yoda just mesmerized and he can't see what's really happening? So that's the only thing that made me, you know, made me uh, like work through that and have it make sense to me is that they're just focused on Anakin and that's their, that's their only thing. It's all they're looking at. Yeah, I can see that point. I mean, I guess listening, looking at it from your perspective, it makes more sense if Jedi can see into the future. I mean, let's just be honest. Maybe Yoda knows what's happening. He knows that Anakin's going to turn. There's nothing they can do. And they're trying to do the best. Because think about it. He's really the only one that can see into the future. Mace is really the muscle. So Mace is really the military general. He's the best lightsaber duelist they have. So he's really the muscle of it. And he already had reservations on Anakin. Not knowing what Yoda knows, and I'm sure Yoda didn't share this with the rest of them, the heartache he's been through. I mean, Yoda feels all that suffering. So I think at this point, like you're saying, if that's true, then I, I think Yoda's just kind of resigned to trying to, like you're saying, do the best they can to keep their muscle or their weapon him on their side. But I, I think in this point, his vision's blurry because I think he knows what's coming, but he can't see and stop it and, and understand it. So it's one of the things, like you're saying, it's it's the inevitable. I think he knows. Maybe that's what his sorrow is towards the end, and we see in maybe 7, 8, 9 when he goes off in the exile after S Order 66, you know, kind of shutting himself off from the Force as well. Yoda's watching this just like how we are, <laughs> just yeah. seeing everything just happen and, <laughs> and knowing good. exactly what's going to happen. And yeah. it's just saying, you know, he's pretty much just playing to, like, you know, to, to, to the hand that's dealt with him. You know, sound like the Doctor himself. Strange, right? It's like the Doctor yeah. Strange, oh, yeah. like Tony Stark. You know, it's <laughs> it's funny how all these are intertwined. The stories yeah. and the characters. I mean, he's just one probability. That's it. There's, and this uh, is yes. the one. Very, very, very tropey. So yeah, like like another place where trope is done good. You know, so I'm 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 there for it. I want to talk for a second about <clears throat> what Padme's deal is, because I oh, but where where the line is for her is so stupid because like like anakin's like i murdered some kids and she's just like let's get married like seriously that's how that's the order in which that happened and here he just like well he, how old were they though how, how old were they though itch like were how, when when <laughs> when she like, said hold that on a second here. i'm talking about the sand people kids i'm talking about oh, the massacre that... of the sand people i'm yeah, talking way like, what, long 17? ago 17 18 at the time yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to get her to cough out that she's a high school, a high school love. I'm just trying, trying to say? understand why she's she's staying with him through this, but then he beats up on her ex boyfriend who had his had his hands on her. I, yeah. I will put that. I will put that here. And listen, I'm not an Anakin defender. Everybody knows I call him the bad boyfriend, and he he really showcases that here. But I mean, she wants to she wants to break break it off with him over this. And he's like, I, I massacred a whole village of <laughs> natives. Well, you know what I mean? Was, like, I just wiped out this, this tribe. About this. We talked about this. Why he, any of us would have done that. <laughs> if, those, if those entities murdered your mother, all bets are off, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, yeah. I'm not. I'm not I kissing. don't care. I'm, all right. Fair. But she didn't start like being into him until that. That's that's the this is the point I'm making. Like where that's in the where that is in the narrative means that like up until then she's very you know, kind of standoffish with him, and then after that she feels like she can fix him, like he's a project. And then he shows up and he just beats up this this guy who's now like the number one villain in the galaxy, by the way. 
So like Anakin, like beating his ass is now a thing on Anakin's resume, <laughs> which is hilarious, right? Uh, but I guess the point, well, the point you're, I want to make is that this this is weird, right? She should probably not be into Anakin way before this, right? Where's the line? You 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 you're, you're trying to, or well, she's young, number one, and but you're trying to equate one moral failing with another and everything, uh, with with like love and passion and stuff. Where is the whole murdering genocide <laughs> thing? <laughs> genocide thing that was um <laughs> that was just something told she 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 she, compre- she compartmentalizes her right her put it in the box, put it <laughs> she's looking at this guy he's got shoulder length hair yeah he's got the right yeah. shadows he's got scars in all the right places he's very good with a lightsaber <laughs> he's protected her he so imagine clovis pulls a gun out on mm. your wife mm or your mm-hmm. girlfriend mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. you become you become the the best most powerful person on in the galaxy right at that moment and then you know what he did he pushed through it and he confronted the guy full on and i i would love to have seen what happened if if some writer said hey let's have a droid fighter crash into the window and cause a disruption of this scene I would love to have seen what happened if Anakin had to stand stand up and disrupt this situation. I mean, this guy had a blaster right to her head. So what do you do? You have a you have a lightsaber, and there's a blaster to your your wife girlfriend's head. What's your next move? Do you talk to the guy? <laughs> nope. Do you talk to the guy, or you do some fancy Jedi shit and impale him from behind? before he even knows what happens to him. I mean, so it's interesting that they sort of show, and and you're hitting on this, they show the degree to which something has to go wrong to mess up Palpatine's plan, right? They're making it very clear how good his plans are because when something goes haywire, it's something as random as Darth Maul coming back from like centipede status, right? He comes back from that or, or something like this, which is a random, you know, plane crash, right? Something that you could, you could never plan. That's what it takes to mess up his plans because I think it is it is obvious that his plan was for Anakin to have to kill this guy, and it was to 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 you know kind of shove that wedge in in with Padme and put him under more stress, because that's his end game with Anakin is to put yeah. Anakin under so much stress that he has to go to Palpatine. And you know what? He didn't get to kill him. He did not get to kill him. Although, is that really true? Because Anakin can jump out of a can like just jump out of a plane and land, and he's fine, right? So why, right. like, this is like, why, why didn't he can't just do that? Two humans up over, up over a ledge. Well, not just that. Why can't they all just jump and land on whatever he's landing on? Right. <laughs> I'm telling you, he chose not to help that guy. <laughs> That's still, yeah, I think no, we're giving him I, too I, much credit I, here. I, I agree. I mean, there was definitely a moment <laughs> where, like I could save both of these people, but you know what? I don't like this guy. Like, this oh. is- well, Clo- Clovis did say he, he, you know, he was just going to let go and everything, you know? So you know, it was sort of like, it, it wasn't too hard to, for Anakin to, um, you know, okay, well, if he said he was going to let go, <laughs> I'm not going to stop. <laughs> I'm not going to call the man a liar, but that is my robot hand. So it will not get tired at all. At all. Ever. You could probably just push up on it and shove her up here. And then I could, oh, that's see you've let go already. What a shame. Oh, anyway, let's get some hot dogs on the way back to Coruscant, baby. Hey, <laughs> you know, he never treated you right anyway. That's all. Yeah. These, these terrible games. Yeah, Clovis, he was weak. He was Ooh. he was a, he was a coward. Um, I mean, he was he was a good you know you know um, foil and everything. So his 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 statue you know his statue there was like necessary. And why Padme was playing the whole like um okay I'm gonna you know you know do this and um um they're they're married and I understand what she was talking about. Okay, well our marriage is built on lies, but <sighs> come on now, Padme. <laughs> you know, give your husband some credit. Are you calling me your your husband and everything? It's not no okay. I'm just gonna, you know, not see you for a while and everything type of stuff. You know, you you guys are in secret for this long. You give give the guy a little bit more credit, and then all of a sudden he's right at the end. Clovis is a, yeah. you know, <laughs> it, it, a, he's a straight coward. You know, we also have to take in context the time frame of this series, even in with episode three. I'm guessing at this point she's pregnant and she doesn't know yet. So we have to keep in mind at that point that that's, that's tying, a good, in the, 
tying in the time of this episode, of this these series, and even even the movies, she's probably pregnant this time now. Mm-hmm. Whether she knows this early or not, I mean, she's probably pregnant. Stress, the stress yeah. this put on a pregnant woman. I mean, so, this could yeah, certainly that's... this could certainly be the like the incident like the meeting that that is the you know how Luke and Leia show up. This could be sort of that turning point for her too because she starts trusting him. But you're absolutely right that it could all line up. They do weird the force. You can do weird stuff with the force in pregnancy, according to many many of the Legends novels. So maybe it takes them. Maybe Luke and Leia took 24 months to show up. You know, you never know. Maybe maybe Anakin's in there. He's like, ah, I'm not ready to go public with this. Slow down, slow down, guys. Let's right. just chill. Maybe Anakin knows. <laughs> Nobody else in the Anakin knows. Right. Oh, man. But, you know, I mean, I guess that's not a plot hole, too, because how does he know, does not know she's pregnant or has kids, you know? But especially we'll because, that. especially yeah, we'll- because they're, they're Luke and Leia, who we know are Force-sensitive, meaning they would have had their like immediate like force presence right. bang like luke like luke skywalker sitting there you know what i mean because that's kind of how yeah. it is Wild yeah stuff. So. so yeah but yeah we'll definitely get into that guys it's just it's unique you know what i mean like i said it was a nice setup for these these first couple seven episodes and i mean it wasn't like the filler stuff it was all important plot points to oh, be saying yeah. Yeah. as it's um you know as we discussed setting up really the empire and really just getting the financial means together and and now it's obviously and we'll dive further into this as we progress in this series and the saying you know what's what's the be all and end all i mean we all know the ending but I, i'm really taking a liking to kind of finding out again how it all happened because this is really tying in so much and it i mean good thing for for this series it's really boosting my scores for the original prequel trilogy as we discussed so all these ratings are jumping up from this the series is really saving it so Big shout out to, uh, you know, Mr. Filoni and crew, who just recently got a promotion as well. So congratulations. Well deserved. You're unaware. So yeah, he's actually the head of the snake now of LucasArts. It turns he is, out. Is he? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, he, just, he just got huh. a promotion. So is he? So, so is he in Kevin Feige status? Well, Feige just oversees. He's the guy. He, I mean, it's his idea. It's his book. It's his mind. They're going off of his stories. He's basically George Lucas right now. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah. One of the best. Mm. Yeah. It turns yeah. out if you have a plan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll get right. to we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. We'll... Yeah, that that'll be our bonus here on the back half. So um oh boy. But yeah, these these set of episodes, um, I mean, I didn't want to stop after seven. I mean, I'm like, I hated to like just stop it because the way it ran, it's like no more arcs now. You know, this is the arc. This is the um. This is the end game. You know, we're about to you know hit up Order sixty six, and it's about to just be such a sad thing. You know, um, I I, I like I said, I can't wait. You know, for revenge, revenge of the Sith, just to see how it all really just breaks down. Um, but yeah, really great writing, really great you know animation still and everything. You know, you got like the um the clones and stuff. You know, fives and everything. You know, um just 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 so much emotion you know cap with um everything that's happening with clovis in the bank and everything it was just it was a great set of great set of episodes and uh what about you ken any final thoughts on these uh first set episodes before we had our uh, intermission and we get into the uh the bonus section for everybody today which would be fun well, like I said, this this is the first this is the first piece so now i'm looking to see now i don't know now i have watched ahead a little bit oh yeah uh-oh not too much is but that i have seen yet but i'm looking for the next chunk so i figure there's maybe three or four things palpatine has to get he's got to get the money he checked uh, he's got to get the territory. So he's working on the separatists to get contracts built at various st- uh, strategic points throughout the galaxy. He's working on that check. So I'm looking for like three. So what's that look like? Does that look like further backing, military backing? Because I don't know, is the Republic actually built up enough and substantial enough to to do this, to defend his his new galactic empire. I don't know. Maybe he's got to enlist a whole bunch of gangsters. You know, he's got to bring in a whole bunch of thugs, you know, like, you know, 
like Hitler did. I mean, most of the SS were all thugs. They were all prisoners that he released. And they were all like the, the dark underworld, you know, the, mm. the, 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 the worst of the worst. So maybe there's something there. Uh, the fourth, I don't know. He's got to get, uh, he's got to get further uh, political buy-in. He has to get everybody to just accept his, his thing. So that's what I'm looking for in the, in the next, like, I guess next seven episodes and then this whole last season. So it, it this is it. This is the, this is the end. This is like end game. You yeah. said it. BB. This is his end game. This is it. This is the final answer. This final solution, you know, this is it. Uh, and just looking time that just, I was doing some reading real quick, just looking at kind of the time frame of the episodes. I think around this episode is when Solo would slot in because this is the mission I think that he has Darth Maul go on to, um, you know, run that faction that he wants him to run. So I think the Solo movie would slot literally right into this, these series of episodes right after he, you know, shocked him and said, I need you to do something for me. So I okay, think that would cool. be the perfect time to, I mean, just guessing, just time frame wise, I think that's where Solo would slot in. Well, yeah, cool. on, the, on the chronological timeline, it did say Solo is right after, um, I think right after um, the Clone Wars. You know? Right. So, yeah, that does yeah. make sense. <clears throat> And then rebels, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but, but yeah, guys. You know, like I said, I we're wrapping up here the beginning of season uh, six, episodes one through seven, and we're going to finish it up here next week with our, I believe it's what eight through fifteen. This is the, uh, the yep. back half run. The rest. So we will yep. go, yeah, eight to fifteen. But um, what we're going to do for you guys is we're going to do our usual short intermission. Excuse me, eight through thirteen. So. We're gonna yeah, do I was short, about to say it's yeah. not that long. <laughs> nah, so yeah, we'll go eight to thirteen there, and then we're gonna we'll have a short intermission here, and we'll come back for a bonus segment on uh, some interesting Star Wars news that was dropped this week. So uh, hold on, guys, and we'll be right back. Now, if you love blood, gore, and violence, please watch Invincible. Were you disappointed by Mortal Kombat blood and violence? Do you enjoy blood and violence as a cartoon? Well, come check out this cartoon on Amazon. Amazon just got some really good stuff as far as this show. You got Omni-Man, you got the fake Teen Titans, you got the fake Justice League. Man, what more could you want? Come watch us on the Nerd Psycho Comic Flick Show. Hey, we're coming back from break here, but as a reminder... Make sure that you guys are going to NerdCyclopedia.com. That's where you will get all our links to your favorite, favorite platforms at NerdCyclopedia. We are on Twitter. We are on Facebook. We are on, uh, are we on TikTok? No, we're not on TikTok. We don't do TikToks and everything here. Facebook, Instagram, and also on Twitter. <laughs> also, make sure that when, when you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platforms, uh, we are Carbonite Bonnie BS. Um, on Apple um, Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts, we are there. Uh, we actually just started a new, new um, fanfic section on NerdCyclopedia.com, so make sure you guys check that out. It's some really good stuff. And also make sure that you're giving us um, some good feedback, nerds at NerdCyclopedia.com. Join us on Facebook as well. We have a group, Carbonite Bonnie BS, a Star Wars group. Appreciate DP and yeah, we forgot about that. We were too excited and jumping in these episodes. We're on the back end leading up to this episode oh, yeah. three. So yeah, oh, yeah, you know, sometimes you forget the, the most important details for all our listeners and viewers. But um, gotta let them know. Gotta let them know. Definitely. We're just coming out of break here, guys. You know, we got some bonus content for you guys. Some really interesting news story that came out this week. Um, don't know if you guys are all aware, but for some, I don't even know how it happened. But Collider got word of an interview that J.J. Abrams had done and basically confirmed what we all thought which was that there was no definite plan for seven eight nine and basically it was just you know there was a loose script that wasn't fully written there were some ideas there was a storyboard but there was no direction and um yeah <laughs> you know after and, uh, and it confirmed what everybody thought over the years and obviously i don't know if there was a you know hush cease agreement that wasn't a contract or you know i don't know if there was any bad blood because, you know, at some point Disney wanted to buy a bad robot and, you know, there was some beef between those two for a little bit. So I, I don't see I don't, I don't see J.J. Abrams do another Star Wars or Disney story maybe after this interview, how they are as far as, you know, when things go public like this. But um, 
Yeah, um, you know, I'll give it to Hitch off the bat to jump into this because, you know, I, I have my, I'll have i say my points towards the end and we'll even save this for when we review um, 789. But yeah, it just, uh, there was a lot of, a lot of fuel on the fire I already had. All right, just so everybody knows, and this is official, <clears throat> all of us are only two degrees of separation from working with J.J. Abrams because somebody <laughs> I directed a play with in high school wrote for person of interest. And I'm not going to say their names because they wouldn't, they wouldn't claim me. Uh, but I will say that that's the truth. So we all are saying this from a place of professional parody. We're the same. We're exactly the same as that guy. Um, the first mistake they made was giving uh, Star Wars to a guy that was doing Star Trek movies. And that <sighs> was really yeah. the number one thing. I all about that. That, all about that. Yeah. That's the number one thing that I think we have to remember is that this guy already was doing... Uh, was doing Star Trek, and frankly, there's not. I don't think that those worlds should overlap. And this is this is makes me uh, a, a purist, and it makes me, you know, a supremacist in a way. I suppose a Star Wars supremacist. I'm all about the wars and not about the Trek. I think the idea that money won't exist is fanciful nonsense, quite frankly. And and any man who's going to make a movie in that universe that wants to come to a galaxy far, far away isn't going to understand that the big thing that keeps everything together is dirty money in Star Wars. That's part of the whole deal. You know, credits to get off a of Tatooine, credits to a bounty hunter, some bribes to a guy who's a corrupt guy that runs a city. It's all part of it. And Gangster. so... Gangsters. Gangsters. And there are no gangsters in Star Trek. And, you know, I, I don't, I'm not, like, angry or anything, like, at these guys for, for doing this. Right. I think there are exigent reasons that cause them to have to make these movies right away. Number one, you buy the thing you want. It's shiny. It's new. You want to run it. Number two, the cast is older, but it, my problem with all of this is that you were really, you know, you really only have one shot with the cast. I mean, that's, and that's all they got when they didn't even get the whole thing. They got two thirds. So, you know, finding out that this was that slapdash is, it's disappointing because it feels like it feels like a waste. And I think they had all the way up until nine to fix it. I think you could have put like if um if seven and eight are next to each other, right? You could put a third movie so that they're all in a straight line. You know what I'm saying? So they're all in a straight line. So you could put a third movie in the middle there. But seven and eight are moving in one direction and then nine moves the other. So it doesn't feel like the, the completion to that story even. It feels like some other story. Mm. Alright, that's what I got right now. What about you, Ken? I mean, I know you're, you're a big movie guy. I'm understanding this. Now, I didn't hear it directly. I'm hearing it from you, T. Mitch, because you're, you're the voice. You're my, you're, my, you're my info stream, okay? Everything that I'm learning now about the new Star Wars world, I'm getting from you. So what I'm hearing is they're saying 789 was a huge mistake, right? They, they didn't. They're sorry. They're going to come out with a public apology that I'm going to see on WPXI. Uh, on WPXI. Break because I'm, if, it, if, I, if that's correct, then that just makes my day. Because from the beginning, I was excited about Seven because that was the first new, 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 new content that I was ever seeing since Return of the Jedi. So this was the first new Star Wars content that actually built in the timeline. Now, for me as a fan, always a super fan, uh, this was this was big. So seven seven, I was wide open. I you know I had split my chest down the middle, ripped open my skin, and I was ready to take whatever they could give me. At the end of it, I was completely i don't want to say disappointed but shocked because there were a lot of things that i did not expect you know i expected the opening scene with the big the big space battle uh the big well i don't know who are the good guys who are the bad guys because that was the initial thing you saw when a new hope opens who who was who was the aggressor because there were two ships shooting at each other so there were a lot of things that I was uh, not ready for, but the, the, it just really threw me for a loop. So if I know now that they thought they know they are saying that this is a mistake and this never should have happened, then I'm, I'm good. I can, yeah. I can yeah, have that part of my life back. What about you, DP? I mean, I know you, you were basically a neutral, but you now being a star Wars fan with your star Wars blinders on, how do you feel about hearing this? 
Hey, I mean, it's it's no surprise. Um, I mean, the the thing about JJ, it's it's like what Hitch was saying. The thing about JJ Abrams and actually being able to go from a star I, I totally forgot about the Star Trek thing. He was fully immersed in Star Trek and then he got it found out he actually got a chance to do Star Wars and he got they 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 he got super excited and left them. You know, he was all set to do like the second Star Wars movie in there. I mean, I mean Star Trek movie. Um but got um or did he do Star Trek, the second Star Trek? I forget. He got sidetracked. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, he did do that. But he was set up to do the next Star Trek movie, but um, Disney got him and um, they decided, okay, he was ready for another Star Wars movie, you know, um, and they got him for that. And The Force Awakens came out pretty good. I liked it, you know. Um, so th it, the, the, the thing that just came to head was when the decision makers, Kathleen Kennedy and whoever, you know, decides to make these movies when they didn't go with the consistent vision of, or didn't decide it, I guess, from the very beginning, not to go with his complete vision throughout the whole trilogy. Because to me, I thought the mistake was when they announced that they were going to have three different directors doing three different movies. Um, I was like, okay, that's a unique way of doing a thing that you would Big expect mistake. to. Right. Yeah. You would expect one vision like a George Lucas. He was always a consistent vision throughout the movies. Um, so to have three different takes on the same characters and still trying to appease like the fan base and everything, that was a big task. But okay, you put it in J.J. Abrams, no matter what you think about his movies and stuff, you put it in his hands and say, okay, you're going to take care of the trilogy, bam, you know. Um, but I think it was one thing that you were saying a while ago, T. Mitch. Um, Disney had just bought this property for over a, a, a number of billions of dollars and they had to get her money back. So um, the doing a force awake is that that was just uh, the money make. We need to get our money back type of movie and stuff. But we had this brilliant idea to, to get other filmmakers to come in and take, you know, put their different vibes and takes on stuff. Some people liked the last Jedi. Some people didn't, you know, but it was still an inconsistent vision because it's didn't, it did it took um whatever was built in a first thing and handed over to a, a done the director where it just didn't it did not seem it was it did not seem like it was any type of communication. It was just like a handoff, like a baton and stuff. You run your own race and everything, but you know, you're not running in tandem. You know, what I'm saying you're running by yourself. Some people have some some track, you know, um, um runners have different speeds than others. But um um they brought Abrams back to be the anchor for something that was just muddled in the middle. And it just, uh, it, it was just, and, and for this to come out like this, as far as the news just confirms everything, you know, yeah. they, 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 it was a hot mess and they were trying to clean it up and trying to please everyone, please no one. Right. And like I said, it's an interesting time too. I mean, Star Wars is flying right now. Abrams has recovered. I mean, I, I don't even think anybody faulted him for any of the movies. I thought both of his movies were fine. I mean, you know, he can do what he can do, but it's, it's just the, the whole story just, you know, me and, you know, Hitch talked about it. First off, you know, not being sexist, but they Disney rode the hot route. And this period of time, the feminine hero was in style. Look at all the movies that are coming out. It was all about female leads. So they went with the female lead. They decided to get rid of the, the solo boys, which were in the original story. And they took George Lucas' story, basically looked at it and just tossed it to the side. Then they decided to hide, handle some writers to write a story that had no really idea that were not somebody who was like a Filoni type. to come up with some all new characters. Basically, they did this High Republic series and Georgia's story and I think that's what kind of frustrates me now and even when the end of story it's not even like we're saying a linear story you got seven going here you got eight going here you had nine going a totally different direction and the idea was if you ever and I know I spoke about this a couple of times read Colin Trevorrow's script you know we talk about how they started the midichlorians they went to m count they change it well in these three last movies I mean there's there's three different ways of how you view a Jedi in, in the Force. So even at that end, you're, you're just like, well, how do you view the Force? Is it everybody? Is it not? Is it a living being? You know, you see, you know, journals of the will. So now the wills exist. It's just like the, everybody took legacy stuff that they thought from Star Wars and Luke and George and put it in the movie. 
and the crazy thing is with these directors and kind of the story, why wouldn't they communicate with each other? That's the thing. Like, you know, we talk about it on our stuff. We communicate on our streams. How are these people not communicating a linear story and they make all this money? That's the and, thing that fires me up. All they have to do is send an email out and have yeah. everybody, you know, you know, add their thing onto it. And then maybe we get a consistent story. So you, I think you said it perfectly. Like, they started to figure it out in nine, right? They started yeah. to figure out what the point was. So what the hell happened? You know, where, where did, where did the, where did the story go? I think they should go back. They should erase seven, eight, nine, just, oh, just it, it is it for sure. And take the folks that were working on clone wars and have them do it because they have this perfect, alignment of story down that just it just works i mean it's great you got to all admit and and i keep thinking to myself why didn't i watch this when it originally came out because i was like well it's a cartoon i'm so stupid you know back then i was young right not that much younger but i was younger now i'm like this is great this is great story i would watch this again and again and again just like i do the original trilogy and the second trilogy and the uh, new trilogy, like Phantom Menace, that, you know, on. Why don't they just go back, get those people? Well, we they did, right? Filoni's now in. J.J. Abrams is in. So now they can go do 7, 8, 9 as it was supposed to be done. Wow. I could stand online and wait for tickets again? How great. I have to wear a mask, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think they'll rewrite them, and I can see Hitch is discussing yeah, all this. Yeah, they will. I, I'm just, I'm just I, trying know. to, I'm just trying to think my way through, like, you know, you know, what's what's this thing they ask you at every presidential election? <clears throat> it's, it's, how are you? Are you better off now than you were four years ago? And let's talk about where would you prefer to be? Would you prefer to be walking out of, you know, Star Wars Episode Nine? Right. If you're a Star Wars fan or would you prefer to be where you are now, which is right after Luke Skywalker took Grogu? Like where like if you had to pick a place like for your own satisfaction to be in the story, where would you prefer to be? Would you prefer to see the things That's that happen after episode nine or do you, are you dying to see what happens next to uh, to to Din and Grogu and Luke and Boba Fett and 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 Boca Raton? And all, <laughs> all the rest of the death watch. Like this is the what's book, so the I'm book of really Boba. Down. The I'm book of really Boba. If all you told me they were making was the book of Boba Fett, and you went back in time to me in high school, and you said a couple things to me, like one, it's going to work out, and two, like you know, they're going to make a Boba Fett TV series, and it's going to be they're, the budget is going to be a billion dollars. Like that's pretty much what I, what I would you know if I was trying to do you know not not wreck history. Uh, I'd be really excited about that. I'd be like, I can't wait for that. And then all the rest of this stuff would come out and I'd have been like, like, where's that Boba Fett series? I thought you told me, like, I, my future me was, was being pretty, pretty cool. And then, so if you told me everything that happened before Mandalorian between like episode three and Mandalorian that I had seen didn't even exist, I don't know that I, I'm in a worse place. Am I in a worse place or not? It, it, are those... Oh. I mean, hey, we're missing. You got to keep in mind too, Hitch, that uh, George Lucas wasn't even at the episode nine premiere. Well, so that's an, yeah. that's another big thing. My feelings about problem. that movie are on tape, and I was very sick when I saw that movie. I I, I was very very sick. It, it, it's it's one of those things because I was I had like a cold and I went to the movie anyway. That's from like the past. You know what I mean? Like it it happened so long ago that it would like I would never in a million years do that now, right? And that's like two years ago. How many times did you see the movie? I only saw it once, and yes, then we talked telling. about it, and I believe I gave it a seven and a half and said that I thought it was crazy. <laughs> crazy. I believe I said crazy. Yeah, and Ken, the reason I don't think they'll re they'll rewrite those three, um, Daisy Ridley's been on, on I guess camera saying that she will come back and reprise a role if they ask her, but I think they're going to just follow this format as far as the Disney Plus stuff. I think they'll just basically write it out. So they'll just keep this story kind of with these, you know, themed, whether it be a Ray series, and they'll just kind of skate past it all. I think that's what they're going to do. They're not going to do another trilogy movies. They'll just keep these series, and they'll just kind of rewrite 
things in that that kind of changes the canon, so to speak, on everything is. I mean, it, I, it's still... I, they'll do an Ahsoka, Ahsoka Thrawn trilogy. Oh. I think they will do Last Command in some fashion. Yes. Because yeah. if you've read those books, that is great content. I mean, there's great stuff in there. So... I think they're going to combine the two elements that we we've been, we've talked about the whole time. You know, DP brings it up all the time, and Asuka is a great character. It brought her in with uh, Mandalorian, Thrawn also mentioned. I mean, there you go. There's your new trilogy, and yeah. if they brought in all the elements from Clone Wars and 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 pandered and did everything they needed to do to get the like the nerd. The nerd like me, the old school Star Wars fan. I think they just need to do a seven eight nine dot one. <laughs> yeah. And I think that'll be a, that makes sense. I think that'll be the Ray series though, because keep in mind they've already sprinkled the elements in there. You have Grogu at this point that'll probably be a part of that because he'll be an older Jedi. Nobody still knows, and there's Star Wars fans, there's people at LucasArts that have said it. Nobody knows if um Ahsoka's dead yet. There's all those voices they heard. They heard Ahsoka's voice, but she can just be talking through the Force. So she's not confirmed as a dead Jedi. So nobody knows where Ahsoka is. At the oh, I hope she's I, I feel like I don't know. I'm more excited to see that character because of the casting already. I feel like the more they the more they put uh, Rosario Dawson front and center, the more successful they're going to be. And I think that 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 to me is what I hope they really they really like to like, uh, like Kim was saying, put their money in that basket. Because I just think that is that is the thing that could be, like, could lift. That's the that's the thing that feels like it has the heat, like the real heat. That feels yeah. like the thing. If we're talking, you know, I talk I talk all the time in in my personal life about how that where it feels like we're in a new era and it feels like there's this big estuary that we're now out of and now it's a new world. And I think that's the sort of thing like that content we'll sell in the twenties, Ahsoka Tano, and, and um, yeah. and Rosario Dawson. I, I would I would definitely pre-buy all those tickets and stay in the line for those three movies for sure. Or, or what about we get back to the droids? What about we get back to R2-D2, C-3PO? What about we get back to them and build off that? So then we could have 789.2. So here's a whole nother storyline based on the droids. Anthony Daniels, I think that that guy's going to live forever. So he could come back and just do that that vo voice that character, R two D two I guess could be anybody. Yeah, and That's that makes a good point. But, but I mean, I, yeah. Daniels makes a lot of money doing Star Wars nights. He was at a Pens game I was at a couple of years ago where he was yeah, on, he yeah, riding yeah. the Zamboni around and stuff, like just waving around as as uh, he, you know, it's cool. I saw him out at a uh, at one of the celebrations, uh, the first or the second one, in a gold tuxedo. I mean, that guy is legit. He is. Yeah. He lives and breathes, breathes Star Wars. He is C-3PO. That guy bought in full on when he was born. I think that was part of his DNA with Star Wars because he is Star Wars. And he will, he will, when he passes away, that's going to be the darkest point in my life. He's just One like He's like eight years old, see some fussy English butler, and he's just like, yes, yes. That's it. That's what I want to do. A fussy, almost like questionably, maybe, I don't know, British yeah. butler. The butler then cowers, and he's like, go on. I'm intrigued. And, and it's, it's crazy because we're just fans, and we talk about this story. Why wouldn't they write a book? after they erase his memory. And just like we talked about, I want to see a story of all of C-3PO, what he's went through his whole life, through his eyes. And the same thing with R2. If you're not going to make a series, write a book. I mean, I think that would be awesome to see. I mean, C-3PO and R2-D2 have literally seen it all. Everything. That's why I, I'd rather Everything. see, like, if they tied in with when he talked to Luke and they finally reconvened, I'd like to see that, like, it's... you know, him just explaining to the story. So why, why wouldn't he do that? Just show Luke on an R2-D2 series and just start it off with him reconvening with Luke, and then it just leads into how he's just filling in everything that's happened. Just Luke's been I mean, gone. It, it, it really, it really begs to the point that you're saying, T-Mitch, that um, 
that it's all this rich history and rich stuff and within the universe and so many stories to tell that it just boggles my mind that 789 could not could not work better they couldn't find a better way of telling the story with all the rich history that that they that the um that the universe has you know um and also begs a question too what is the future of the movies you know i know a movie's coming out with patty jenkins and everything but what is the future of the movies if you got all these 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 um the animated stuff and the tv shows doing uh, a certain thing you know um they are they can't depend on the skywalker because that's ended you know they can't depend on that saga anymore so how is that going to proceed and go ahead and still be star wars i hope they don't make i hope disney the disney heads i should say not feloni i hope the disney heads don't make the mistake of trying to um separate the star wars um the movie stuff from the 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 small screen stuff because it works, it's, it's still one and the same. You know, one is bigger screen than the other, and you can still tell tell your grandiose stories and stuff. But don't disrespect the um the 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 smaller screen stuff by putting something on a big screen that doesn't have anything to do with the small screen. You know what I think that you I mean, we talked discussed this even with the Mandalorian. They're just waiting, and you know this is inter- it's, it's a sidebar, but you know seeing that Eternals trailer and the cast they have. They're just waiting for those couple A-list actors to say, you know what, you know, I'm going to start doing Netflix more. I'm going to start doing Disney Plus. That's all. That's all. Because Star Wars, other than Harrison Ford, has never really had that A-list actor. They start getting these, you know, whether it be Angelina Jolie, they start getting these big names to do these roles. They have the budget now. That's that's when it's end game, really. I mean, we watch these stories with unknown actors. You imagine you get some of these people involved in this, and it doesn't even have to be them, but these A lists. I mean, Rosario Dawson, I would consider an A list actor. So they're starting to hire real talent now. And I, I mean, just seeing her in this couple episodes, how exciting was that? I, you know, if I, you... I trust Filoni. If he is elevated to that level of what you say, I trust in him. You know, um, hopefully, you know, if, if he can guide, he's he should have been the one in the in, in, in the driver's seat in the first place. But I understand if he wasn't ready or if they felt that he wasn't ready. But obviously, you know, by the Mandalorian Clone Wars, of course, you know, and these um, other shows that's coming out. He should have been the one in the driver's seat from the get go, you know. Yeah. Yep. So uh, before we wrap it up here, guys, we'll just go around the room here and we'll just do uh, we'll do our one final point here on our expanded news edition here. As far as hearing, I don't know, some people consider it heartbreaking. I mean, I consider it truthful. So we'll go around and we'll just go over our final points here on the news of, you know, Abrams admission of the sequel trilogy and and where it landed. And, uh, you know, we'll prepare for our part two of season six of the Clone Wars. So uh, we'll lead with you, Hitch. What are your final thoughts on the kind of our news for this week, our topic? You know, I don't know. This is it's so, it's so weird to hear them like do this this thing where they want to sort of erase that erase that that this happened. You know what I mean? Like this backpedaling thing. It's just it's just such a weird it's such a weird thing to have have come out. You know, <clears throat> kind of kind of here, and it's right before what what has sparked this reignition of Star Wars is the Mandalorian, and what's about to happen is that is about to have its own universe like right now we're right now at the inflection point before all of that hits but when we all know that it's gonna that it is gonna hit we saw and it's weird because i remember thinking about this when we were watching season two of the mandalorian a bunch of backdoor pilots in season two that all fit together and made sense and ended with in my opinion the best the maybe the best star wars moment like for pure enjoyment for me ever i mean seriously it's it's weird to think of it like that but you know um it is what it is and so if i'm asking myself you know what do i want to see them make more of well i want to see them make more of those sorts of stories that they're making now and the great news for that is that star wars is as i know an extremely resilient medium it's an extremely versatile medium and it's a it's a it's a a story universe that has already thrived with multiple different eras and characters and versions of its own story. So for me, I don't worry so much about what's going to happen next because I know that what's going to happen next is already, already set up really, really well. And if I'm thinking about what this news really tells me, it's that when I thought, you know, 
this seems all sort of smashed together and rough when I watched the episode nine is that I was just right. So, and anything that makes me feel like I'm right, I like. So I guess I kind of like this news. What about you, Ken? As long as they retract the Ben Solo piece, I'm good. I mean, that just, to me, that just felt like something they pushed in there. It, it felt forced. Um, I don't think they need to go back and rewrite everything. I mean, I enjoyed the movies, the three movies as they were. They were good, but they don't really fit with the whole timeline. I would like to see, like I said, I'd like to see 7.1, 8.1. I'd like to see a different version, uh, a different timeline, maybe skewed by, you know, 15 degrees of uh, Kevin Bacon. I don't know. Something that just gives us a little bit better um, uh, con continuity between um you know, the, uh, the middle trilogy and the last one, you know, whatever they want to do. But anyway, Disney has my money. So whatever they want to do is fine with me. I'm good. What about you, DP? Um, I'm, I'm a little bit with, with Ken there. Um, I hope they, no matter what we may think about seven, eight, and nine, I really hope they stick to their guns and don't do any rewriting whatsoever. Is there? It, it reminds me of when um, the the prequel trilogy, you know, trilogy came out, and there was fan backlash as far as that. But um, Lucas stuck to his vision, and he saw it, you know, all the way through Revenge of the Sith. It wasn't the greatest thing, you know, but he stuck with it, and he thus, it, you know, birthed the Clone Wars. So something could still be savaged out of whatever you know hot mess that was created, you know, within these movies. Um, I don't think you need to go back because I think the minute you go back and try to rewrite something just because the fans say that it's, it's, it's a thing, then you you do what you did. What you, 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 you don't please anybody. You, you, know? lose, you lose cred. You lose a lot of credibility. And that's where the franchise starts to fall. You know, it's just, just, just do, do not, do not go, you know, um, and re try to recreate and retcon. Well, maybe retconning is a different thing, to, but don't rewrite something that's already set in stone. History already happened. This stuff already happened. So move forward, learn from it. Um, don't do it again. And look at the good elements of what the trilogy brought and see if you can expand off that. <coughs> yeah. And I agree with both of you guys, actually all three of you, as far as, you know, everything has been said. Uh, I, I just look at it as far as, yeah, they, they can't rewrite it because, like I said in my mind, Ray had to be a Kenobi. She can't be the son or the daughter of a clone or whatever, or however they want to explain it. She had to be Kenobi. That didn't happen. Ben Solo shouldn't have died because he was the last linear Jedi that was had the DNA in the blood, so that didn't make sense. But um, what they can do is, you know, we've seen Batman rewritten I'm thinking about time, Superman. They can pick somebody, you know, and I'm not saying Christopher Nolan, but they can kind of go that route and after seven, rewrite, or actually after six, rewrite their own story and just go a different route. You don't have to erase this. It happened. You know, we can't erase what happened, but we can see, you know, Jason Solo, you know, Anakin Solo. We can, somebody can do that. Those scripts still exist somewhere, you know. We'd like to see a Lucas cut. You know, everybody said it. With Filoni coming on board, you know, I, I mean, if, if fans can can get that Snyder cut to be released in four hours on HBO Max, I would vehemently see if enough people drew up a Star Wars. You know, as big as a fan base is, enough people brought it up. I think those movies would be released at some point. Maybe not in our lifetime. I mean, it could be, but I, I definitely, as my final point, I, I just like to see. I want to hear George's vision now, 100%. If he doesn't think, if they thought that was a dumpster fire, then let's see. Even if they just release the scripts to public and people we can read them and they can go with their own. I, you know, you can read them if you want. I just want to know what he wrote, 100%. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, guys, another exciting episode here. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy the bonus content as far as our thoughts on that. And if you guys want to, uh, the article I believe is on Collider. So I want to give them credit. It was an article that they brought up. So Collider has the article on what a JJ Evans officially has said word for word. So if you guys want to check that out, um, it is on Collider as far as all that. But um, once again, guys, great episode for everybody. Hope everybody who's listening to us, as they said, had a good episode. And until this next one here, guys, this is the way. This is the way. notice Anakin's room had a bunch of weird stuff in it. Nerd.
Nerdcyclopedia.